Okay. So, uh, yeah, welcome everybody to the uh, webinar here. Um, well, so I'm going to go ahead and introduce myself. Um, my name is James Converse. I'm the Chief Solutions Architect for ZBrains.net. We're a Zoho Premium Partner and uh, been in this uh, Zoho ecosystem for just over five years. Uh, before that, I was working with ERP systems um, for a variety of companies. But uh, when I started working with Zoho, I noticed how fast they were coming out with new features, and it's really exciting to be a part of coming from the accounting world where basically nothing ever changes. Um, so uh, really excited to be a, a Zoho partner and, and uh, really experiencing the kind of growth that Zoho has been having. Yeah, we do have quite a few products. We're a big developer, um, do a lot of integrations, often get sucked into ERP integrations, our accounting-based software integrations. So that's kind of where this, uh, this came from. So we have both QuickBooks desktop and online uh, versions available. And we can, this is with Zoho CRM, connecting with Zoho CRM, but we can actually connect uh, with uh, Zoho Books, uh, meaning QuickBooks to Zoho Books, which has does have a real use case sometimes. Um, <clears throat> particularly when you have an on-premise ERP system and people need access to info in the cloud, we can connect to Zoho subscriptions and we can even connect QuickBooks to Zoho Creator if you have custom applications, custom billing applications, inventory management, things like that. So quite a few connectors between QuickBooks and the entire Zoho stack. Uh, today what I'm going to do is I'm going to go through our slide deck, which is, you know, a bunch of, bunch of screens, but um, after that, should get through that pretty quickly, and then we'll go into a live demo, save time for questions at the end. <clears throat> so this is me several years ago. <laughs> no gray hair, as you can see, um, but uh, that's changed. So, <laughs> um, so four ways our integration uh, better connects your business. Uh, we're going to learn about easy setup, uh, give you guys an exclusive offer, talk about uh, new developments and also have time for some Q&A. Um, here's my pitch. Are you wasting time and money fixing data entry errors and waiting for key data to sync? Well, look no more. Four ways our integration better connects your business. Uh, first feature is uh, mapping stamp both standard and custom fields. Remember, we're going to go through this in a live. This is just a, uh, a slide deck. So we can map both standard fields and custom fields. Um, <clears throat> we integrate, as I mentioned, with both QuickBooks Desktop and online. Um, QuickBooks Desktop uses the web connector. So there are two methods to connect. Right now, we're using the web connector and not the SDK. Um, generally, we frown on using the SDK because it, it uh, breeds a lot of support tickets on QuickBooks itself. And we are Zoho partners. We don't necessarily want to get into QuickBooks support. So we chose the safer route, which is the web connector. 90% uh, I would say of all people integrating with QuickBooks use the web connector. Uh, data migration, we have a feature. Um, it's it's comes standard with the annual plan or you can do it as a one-time add-on in the monthly plan that allows you to migrate historical data. So want to separate integration from migration, right? Integration means records will sync going forward from when you deploy. Data migration means I want to. I want to. Uh, one time, I need to grab historical data and put it into Zoho or vice versa. Um, so that's a, a feature we offer. We allow you to choose a date to migrate data from by module, and the system will look at the create date uh, of each of those records and push uh, the data into the other system accordingly. Uh, have a sync log. We'll show you that. Um, explains why, makes for easy debugging. If it's an error in Zoho, meaning an error, like a data error with, with one of the records, maybe there's some weird special character or something like that. We actually give you the URL of the record in Zoho that is causing the issue, and you can just click the link and fix the issue, and the system will resync. <clears throat> uh, one thing I want to point out, I think Vishnavi already did, is that we're a Zoho Premium Partner. We have a full team of consultants and engineers uh, Probably didn't mention we're right. You're located right here in Old Town, Pasadena, California. It's going to be nearly 100 degrees again today. Darn it! Um, all of our license plans do come with US-based support. Um, we do product development. Um, product development is done in our uh, office in India, but uh, all of the actual support and anything custom happens right here. 
Um, I'm going to go through the sign up process here. Pretty basic. Uh, choose your plan, sign up, authenticate, start syncing. So uh, I'll show you this in real time again. So you pick a plan. Uh, that's the pricing. So there's a freemium version for accounts and products. Those sync to customers and items in QuickBooks. Uh, bronze allows you to sync invoices. Silver allows you to sync quotes, estimates, and sales orders. Um, gold package allows you to do purchase orders and vendors. Zoho Serum, as you might know, has purchase orders and vendors. And then you can add to any plan if you want to sync payments. Uh, right now, with every version uh, from bronze and higher, you can sync the balance of an invoice. Uh, the the add-on is to sync individual payments. The reason it's an add-on is because uh, payment the payment module is not a module in Zoho CRM. It's a, it'd be a custom module if you add it. You can only do that with the enterprise version of Zoho CRM. So there's a process that we go through of actually deploying the payment module for you and then also syncing it to QuickBooks. So it's just a one-time uh, add-on that you have to do for us to sync the payments. Um, a couple of other integrations. These are these are really like additional integrations and not just additional features. But we do have a credit card integration if you wanted to take cards directly in Zoho CRM, meaning click a button and um, have it open up your payment gateway to, to take a credit card. And sales tax calculation. Um, we have an, uh, another integration that is uh, an add-on to this integration, which uh, allows you to calculate sales tax using a system called TaxJar. Um, sign up, so pretty straightforward there. You choose your plan, which I just showed you. Sign up, first name, last name, basics, here's your plan. Um, authentication, so you do have to log into Zoho. You have to point it to QuickBooks, meaning meaning that your QuickBooks desktop lives on your server somewhere, on a server somewhere, so you have to point it to that. If it's QuickBooks Online, this step is not required. And then here's this feature for syncing historical data, if you had that feature. So you, it's by module, you choose the date. This is the mapping interface. So you, it's, a, it's a GUI for mapping fields. So on the left-hand side, we have QuickBooks. On the right-hand side, we have Zoho. Obviously, it's a lot longer. There's more than five, six fields you can map. It has all of the fields in both systems. Um, so you just, uh, it's a lot like importing data into Zoho where you have the, the source system and the target system and you have to choose the field that the data is going to go to. This is a one-time setup. Static field, if you check this box, it allows you to assign a literal value, uh, commonly referred to as hard coding. So if you want to say, you know, customer is always active or something like that, you would check the box, set it to true or active, um, so that this uh, option allows you to hard code uh, specific values. Coming soon stuff, uh, it seems that these things have been coming soon for a while because we keep getting asked to build more and more connectors, more more systems people want to integrate with outside of just QuickBooks. But uh, this, these are things that are on our roadmap. Um, I would say this one's the most critical. This one's actually coming out this week. Um, this allows you to trigger integrations using webhooks. What that means is that I can make an integration literally real time right now, the, the QuickBooks desktop integration and the online is a scheduled sync. And you can you can schedule it every like five minutes. So it's pretty close to real time, but the webhooks would allow you to trigger the integration to be in real time. <clears throat> Usually five minutes is good enough for, for uh, our customers, but that's a feature coming. Um, Another feature people will ask for uh, is, is adva more advanced mapping. They want to do calculations. Uh, they want to con con concatenate fields, parse data, things like that. They're more enterprise grade, I would say. Um, that's a, it's a ton of development for us to do that, but uh, something on our roadmap. Map custom objects. Uh, well, we have this for Zoho Creator already, and everything in Zoho Creator is custom. Um, working on it in Zoho CRM. Uh, but uh, it's, it's uh, something, again, that's in the roadmap. Um, connect to custom systems, pretty far off from this one, but it's something on our radar to, for somebody to be able to make their own connectors, meaning, meaning if they have an API that they want to add uh, to the platform, they can add it on their own. I mean, I wouldn't say you know, an accounting person would do that, but still done by a technical person, but maybe not an actual engineer right you don't have to write code to do that that's a feature we want to add 
contact information. I'll leave this slide up. Uh, settings area, which is where both the data migration and the mapping live. So this is the mapping interface. Um, so the mapping interface, I'm looking at a customer sync here, okay? And I have QuickBooks on the left-hand side and Zoho on the right. I literally just have to find the phone number field like that and map. There is a standard map. Um, so if, if you don't mess with anything, it's it's going to be just ready to deploy. Um, but if you want to add custom fields, for instance, um, you uh, if you add a custom field to Zoho, you uh, can sync all mappable fields. That that basically updates the what's called metadata uh, from Zoho and QuickBooks. So if you add a new custom field, you push that button, it'll show the the new custom fields that you've you've added. But uh, this is pretty straightforward. I'm just uh, choosing uh, fields to correspond to each other. I'm not sure if I have facts. Looks like I do. So I just do that. Um, and then if I wanted to uh, assign a literal value, I would click this little static button and I would just type the value. Obviously my account number is dynamic. I probably would not want to do it with this particular field, but if I maybe did something like that, that's, that's what that would be. So I'm assigning a, te you know, a text value rather than using a, a field to map. So once I'm done mapping for each of my modules, I might apply some filters, okay? So filters uh, would say, you, you know, would allow you to only sync uh, certain records. Uh, as you might know in Zoho CRM, you have, uh, you have leads, accounts, contacts, and deals. Well, if you're using Zoho CRM the way it's intended, <laughs> whole nother question there, um, uh, accounts aren't always customers and neither are contacts, right? Your prospects could, could be an account. Accounts literally a company, doesn't mean it's a customer. So if I wanted to, uh, let's say I, you know, I was using the system the way it's intended and I had prospects that I did not want to sync with QuickBooks, I would do something like this account type is customer, right? So then the data would not get synced until uh, until the account type said customer, however that occurred, right? Could be a workflow rule that updates on the first sale, could be someone manually doing it, you could default it if everybody's a customer, but that's what this feature is intended to. It works a lot of the same ways as those list views do, right? So you, you just set the criteria and uh, then you would hit save. <clears throat> um, next thing here, so you, you, you do decide this on sign up, but this is where you can actually change certain things, so you have the path, this is where your QuickBooks database lives, okay? Uh, where you can update your authentication token from Zoho. Uh, there's a process for, for generating an API auth token. Uh, you can do that from within CRM or you can go to accounts.zoho.com. We can, of course, help you with that. Download QWC file. So after you do these first two things, you can download this QWC file. So as I said, uh, QuickBooks Desktop, this is this for desktop only, uses the web connector. That's a, that's a technology or a, a, an app made by Intuit. And the QWC file is like a configuration file for the web connector. So everybody that uses QuickBooks Desktop needs to install the web connector and then do these first two tabs here and then download this QWC file. You download it here, you go to your web connector that you've installed and you attach it kind of like an email. And that, that's what says, hey, my Zoho lives here and my QuickBooks lives over there. That's what, this, that's what the QWC file does. It is called an XML pointer. Sales rep mapping. What happened there? I wonder if I didn't download something. Let me just check. Hmm, I'll have to check into that. Okay. Um, so sales rep mapping is, uh, I wonder if it's maybe this uh, deactivated account or something, but uh, sales rep mapping is the, uh, a record owner in Zoho has to, has to be mapped potentially if, if you have this feature turned on in your QuickBooks uh, to a sales rep. You may or may not be using sales reps in QuickBooks, um, but you know, if you're transacting and you have which um, that, that you will uh, have to map sales uh, users in Zoho to sales reps in QuickBooks. And that would get recorded on a, a quote sales order or invoice. I'm um, guessing you know, it has something to do with commissions as well. 
uh, item account settings. Um, so <clears throat> item account settings, this is where uh, you can sync both, uh, you can decide if you want it to sync both inventory and non-inventory items. This is a QuickBooks thing. Uh, so this is products in Zoho CRM. Um, so we have both inventory and non-inventory items, service items and other charges uh, like sales tax and shipping, things like that. So we're syncing all different kinds of items. <clears throat> uh, sync direction. So accounts, products, um, and anything non-transactional we can do bi-directional. Uh, there is actually a limitation on QuickBooks side that really prevents us from doing a bi-directional sync on sales order, transactions, sales orders, invoices, quote sales orders, invoices, purchase orders. Um, so you choose a direction there. Typically, uh, you know, if you think about your process flow, your, your person who does invoicing isn't going to enter them in Zoho one day and then QuickBooks the next. Um, so you know, if, you, if you have a, a, a flow in your company, which you really should just for scalability purposes and accountability purposes, you, you really don't need bi-directional syncing on transactions. That's what we found. Um, but like an address change, that would happen in an account or customer record or change in a product description or price or something like that. That is true bi-directional. Uh, sync historical data. Um, that's We kind of went through that already, but you choose the date, say if you want to hit submit. <clears throat> item settings, so this is to sync only specific products um, <clears throat> that if you have maybe component items and finished to good items. Um, so if you don't want to sync all products. And that is pretty much it. That is a tour of, of mapping. That's a tour of deploying, filtering, settings, sign up, pretty much it. Um, so I'm going to go back to my slide and <clears throat> all right, guys, thank you so much for Slightly coming. Change. Okay. Hopefully it was informative. And, uh, uh, if, if you don't get in touch with us, we'll definitely be getting in touch with you. Thank you so much.